What a great year, amen. Um, we could have added so many things to that video, um, whether it be a concert, or whether it be Kid Zone hanging out, or some other Wednesday night girls ministries, or the Royal Rangers, or so many other things that God did in different ways. Uh, street ministry, just God has been very good to us. Um, and so we just love, we love uh, just what he's doing. Uh, t- today, today I want to take a, a few moments and um, really highlight some things from last year and then talk about some of the things that I believe that God has really laid upon uh, our heart. Um, before I do that, I just want to, uh, I don't know if it's announced or not, but uh, we're doing water baptism uh, this, uh, this Easter, on Easter Sunday. And uh, so I just want to encourage you, in case I forget, if you've not been baptized in water uh, since you came to Christ, it doesn't matter whether you're 10 or whether you're like 90. Um, One of the first steps in obedience to Christ is to get baptized in water. So I just want to encourage you with that right now. Say, hey, you know what? Yeah, I think I want to do that. And uh, if that's you, you can, I know we did bulletins already, but, you know, maybe fill out a, on the giving envelope, just put, yeah, I want to do water baptism, contact me, drop it in a generosity box or call the office. But um, I just know there's people here that need to get baptized and you haven't yet. And Easter Sunday would be a great service to do that. So, so here, here, here's some things that uh, just thinking about last year, um, heard stories about um, whole families getting baptized together. Uh, that was one of the highlights of, of last year, of just seeing a, a one of the families. And it's been a couple times over the years, but that was really neat. Um, stories of marriages finding healing, people that were on the verge of divorce and finding God bringing healing was some great stories uh, last year. Some prodigal sons returning home. Maybe you remember some stories, especially in the, in the, in the prophetic times when people shared about how their child uh, came back to Christ or is now attending church or whatever, just, just great stories of faith. Stories of people finally trusting God with their finances, of saying, you know what, it's not mine, it's his, and I'm, I'm trusting him, great stories. We heard stories this year about people stepping out in faith in areas they never thought they could people teaching and leading, and they're like, I didn't think I could do this, and they're doing it. We've heard stories about uh, God healing, uh, but not just physical healing, uh, emotional healing and mental and relational, how God has been faithful to his word and has healed so many people this this year, so so many stories. We um, Today, uh, you know, over the years, uh, since way before my time, uh, even before Pastor Bob's time, um, when the church was first planted, one of the goals was to plant churches in, in the UP in the 906. And today, to have uh, a church being planted down the road in Bark River, amen. And so, like, that's a, that's a godsend. I know it's not 2022 news. We'll bring it back up again, but I think we should celebrate it, amen, and continue to pray for them. Um, and just... God is alive in that work at New Life, isn't he? Um, so when I share some numbers, I, I, I like numbers, I like, I like metrics, I like to go, okay, um, this is where we were, this is where we are. And so just know that every number that, that I share, that we share, it, it's about a person. It, it's not just um, some number, but it's like people. So like, just remember that. So um, last year we had 367 first-time people contacting. So maybe they came on a Sunday morning. Maybe they, maybe they started serving in the community center. Maybe they gave for the first time. So we use at our church what they call planning center. So 367 first time entries into planning center last year. That's awesome. We had, check this out. We had 731 people check in at least once in 2022. You know what that is? Like if you do the connection card and you know, like I'm here or you went in the church center app and you said I'm here or, or you're at home online and you're like, hey, I'm here and you, and you check in. Like so 730 people checked in at least once in 2022. 609 people checked in at least once in 2021. 512 people checked in at least twice in 2022. 460 in 2021. 
441 people checked in at least three times in 2022, 412 in 2021. But here's a really interesting number. 358 adults, not children, checked in at least three times last year. So that's those that actually checked in. 358 adults checked in at least three times. So help me, help me do a test. How many here, in some way, you, you checked in at New Life on the first Sunday service some way at least three times last year? Okay, put your hands down. This, I need you guys to be honest. I, this is so important in a moment. How many of you did not? Like not, like just be honest. Come on, it's all right. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Be honest, get it proud. I'm not no judgment zone. For, what do they call it? Planet fitness, free judge, no judgment zone. Yeah. So yeah, okay. Um, so remember that because it's going to come back in a moment. Water baptisms last year, we had uh, 35 water baptisms. And this is so cool. It's the second highest since 1985 last year. Isn't that awesome? 35 people got baptized last year. Another number that's really interesting is 87 first-time givers last year. Uh, it's the most since 2019, and then it was 121 first-time givers. So last year, 87 people gave for the first time. Attendance. So we had 278 on average people attending in person last year. On average, we had 160 people online every week. So that doesn't count like I came back and listened to it. Um, The numbers go 75 people live on Facebook, uh, 50 people at newlife906.com, 20 people on YouTube, and 10 people on BoxCast. That's the average for last year. Here's a number that shocked me. I'm just like, wow. 180 different people served in some capacity last year. Amen? That means 180 people at least one time went through Planning Center, the the program that we use on the Servant app, and at least one time they signed up to say, yeah, I'm serving somewhere last year. 180 people. We had 110 people on average last year in life groups. 110 people. We had 19 new members, so 19 people last year said, you know what, I believe new life is my home. They went through the class. They said, yep, I'm signing up. I believe the vision that God is leading through new life. I want to be a part of that. Last year, we got to open the community center, grand opening. So um, we, we have been working on that area probably for close to 12, 14 years. Started with buying one piece of property. Some of you remember that on the board. First, you bought one piece of property and then another one and then a larger property and then we tore buildings down. Like we, I don't know how many of you remember all of this, but it has been a work in progress. So to say that the grand opening happened in 2022, like praise God, praise God. One of the reasons why we wanted a community center was to create a safe place for people to share life together, uh, to help encourage families to connect together to a good place for people to just to hear about Jesus in a safe environment. So check this out. Um, the playground has been open nearly every weekend since October. By the way, can I give a shout out to those that volunteer in the um, every weekend volunteers are coming in often the same volunteers and giving of their time. And check this out, 150 children is the average number of children on a weekend that come through that playground, 150. So that's not, again, it's, they're not just numbers, they're children. So that's the children, doesn't, it doesn't include their parent or guardian or whomever, grandparent, people coming through. Just having a chance to just hang out as a family um, and, and just maybe even hear something talking maybe at another table about Jesus or the power of God or whatever. Um, that does not include things like rentals. Uh, right now, we average somewhere around four 
four to five rentals every weekend, so birthday parties every weekend. It doesn't include that. It doesn't include, anybody ever heard something called pickleball? This is, yeah, this game pickleball. Uh, they use the gymnasium twice uh, a week, uh, two times in, in the week. Uh, it doesn't include girls' volleyball team. There's, a, I think it's a high school team that meets uh, for practice. I think there's like 20, 25 girls. Uh, it doesn't include homeschool basketball. It doesn't include uh, school using the playground and gym. This is one of the things that we've been praying for for a long time about just how do we, like I, I always felt like if new life wasn't here, would our community know? That's been a big part of our vision for a long time. And the fact that, the fact that like the schools are now using the playground and the gym, I think we had two classes use it Thursday and I believe one on Friday. Um, so that is such a godsend and just allowing our community to be a part of our church culture. And, and that's so awesome. That doesn't include Special Olympics. That doesn't include the gymnastics group. That doesn't include this thing called the Bounce House Bash. That happens once a month. Man, I just so thankful. Um, so we're in this year going to continue to find some creative ways to reach people. We just had a conversation about maybe doing a fireworks show this year, and so we're in talking about that. Uh, we'll probably bring some more bands in as well this year, but we'll find some creative ways. How do we reach our community? Hopefully, some more semi trucks. Uh, that's always fun. Um, to give away stuff to our community, but just finding ways to love on people and really share the gospel with people. And so we'll keep doing that. But there's one word that we really felt like, this is a word that God has given to us for this year. Um, and the word is grow. It's grow. Um, and, and the Bible talks a lot about the importance of growth. 1 Corinthians thirteen eleven says, put away childish things and grow in your faith. 2 Peter 3.18 says, hey, grow in the grace and grow in the knowledge of God. Grow. Ephesians 4.13 says, God gave church leadership to do what? To equip the saints for ministry so they could grow. So they could grow. Um, this is a plant that my wife just planted. It's cute. Um, but how many know that this plant should not stay little? It's meant to grow and become big. And the cool thing is it's actually meant to produce other plants that in turn grow and mature and become fruitful, right, and faithful. Like it's the same way in our spiritual life that, listen, in the same way that you have an infant, you, you want that infant to grow. Amen? Like this, work with me here. So like I love little kids, um, but there's a time when that little kid, like the infant grows up and then they become, I uh, shared this a couple of week, weeks ago, then they become teenagers and you're like, okay, time to leave home. And then you want them back, right? And then like, okay, leave home for a season and come back, right? So, like, so, there, is, so there is this sense of, uh, of growth that like we all recognize in our lives that growth is imperative. No one wants to feed a 20-year-old person an infant bottle. Like, we want them to grow and mature and be strong. It's the same way in our spiritual life. Chapter 5 and 6 of Hebrews is a little painful. So just, you know, put your toes under your seat or whatever. Um, but it's hard. He, here, here's what the author says. He says to the readers, to the Hebrews, hey, listen, y'all need to grow up. He says, keep growing from infant Christians to mature followers of Jesus. He says, hey, listen, and it goes on in chapter 5, says, you, you know, you're still getting milk as an, as an infant believer. You're, you're, you're still at the very basics of your faith. And he admonishes them with love and grace to say, hey, listen, you have been saved but there's more to your life and salvation. Like God wants you growing in grace and knowledge and discipline and sanctification that we should not be the same the day that we get saved, even a week later or a year later or a couple of years later. But he's saying, listen, some of you guys, you've been saved for a while, but you're still just getting milk. And it's time to grow up. It's time to be mature. 
And he goes on to say this, you should be teaching and leading others. So there's a maturity place that happens as a believer when we actually go from I'm receiving, I'm receiving the bottle, but eventually I have to put my big person pants on and I have to grow closer to God. And there's a place for me where I start teaching and I start leading other people in the faith. That's what mature believers, believers do. So here's this really hard verse, and he gets really to the point in Hebrews chapter 6, verses 1 through 3. I'm going to read the New Living Translation. It says this. So, in light of all this, stop. Let us stop going over the basic teachings about Christ again and again. Do you, do you kind of get like this frustration? He's almost like, you know what, you guys, like we don't need to keep going over the basics of our faith again and again and again and again. At some point, we need to move on. Does that negate the basics? No. But it does say, hey, listen, like you should know the basics of faith and there's maturity that needs to happen. So he says, hey, let's not keep going over it again and again. What are some of those basics? You know, let us go on instead, becoming mature in our understanding. Surely we don't need to start again with the fundamental importance of like repentance. Like every week we shouldn't have to just you know, like talk about repentance. Have you repented? Have you repented? Like there should be a important understanding that, yeah, I'm repenting of my sins, but I'm growing in that. So we shouldn't need to keep going over the fundamental importance of repenting from evil deeds, of placing our faith in God, you know, instead of ourselves or our stuff. You don't need further instruction about baptism or the laying on of hands or the resurrection of the dead or eternal judgment. I've often said this, that most of us know way more than we put into practice. We probably don't need another Bible study teaching. We need another Bible study put into practice, right? So we don't need to go back into baptisms and laying on the hands and resurrection of the dead and eternal judgment. And so, God willing, we will move forward, right, to understanding. Like, let's move forward to understanding. So what does that mean? In essence, is that, that the gospel is more than getting saved. The gospel message, as Pastor Jake uh, shared for the last uh, few weeks, is really about being a part of the kingdom of God here and now and living our lives in accordance with the kingdom of God. That's the gospel message. All that encompasses with that kingdom. And it changes everything. It changes how we live. It changes what we do. It changes what we value. It changes what's most important. Kingdom living changes everything, and that's maturity. So here's some areas that I feel like, as, uh, as your pastor, that I feel like these are areas that, as a church, we have to do better. And by mean we, I mean me as well, right? So all of us working together, there's some areas of growth that just feel like uh, are, are important to, to, talk, to talk about. So let's go back to this number. Now, if we have 358 adults check in at least three times a year, I reason this. I reason that if you checked in around three times a year, you probably call New Life home. If you checked in one time, maybe you're checking it out. Maybe you checked in twice. Maybe you're still checking it out. When you start getting to like three or four times, it's pretty much your home. Would you agree? So 358 people checked in. That means that doesn't include all of you rebellious people that didn't check in right? It doesn't include all of you. These are the, the faithful, proud ones, right? right? So these are the ones that checked in. 358 adults checked in last year at least three times. It means they probably called New Life Home. Um, if you add in approximately the 100 children that come every week, that means, this is important, that means on every Sunday, we should have a minimum gathering of 458 people every Sunday, or rather three, uh, yeah, 458 people every Sunday at a minimum. Just those, if the people that checked in three times showed up every week and the kids that show up, there should be 458 people every week. But again, this isn't about numbers. It's about people, right? So it's not about just having big numbers, but it's about recognizing the importance of the people that God has placed in our lives as a church. So what that tells me is that, so if that's not happening, then there seems to be a disconnect with the importance of meeting together as a church. People that are online, like it's there because you're at work. It's there because you can't make it. It's there because my mom is in Texas enjoying the 80-degree weather while we're in a blizzard, whatever, right? 
It's there be for some reason because you can't be there, but church online might be a check-in place just to check things out because you've never been a part of new life, and that makes sense, but it should not be your regular place of worship. Somebody should say amen. So that tells me is a disconnect, and the disconnect is this, that we really don't understand biblically the value and the importance of coming together as a church. So I can't spend the whole sermon service talking to you about that, but a lot of that is on you, right? Maturity comes to the place when I'm no longer having people feed me, but now I'm getting into the Bible, and I'm studying myself to say, what does God say? And then I'm applying it in my life. Here's what Hebrews chapter 10, 25 says, do not neglect the gathering of the saints. Why is that? Because they were big into numbers? No, because there was a world happening in in that culture that said, listen, if we're going to make it in our world, if we're going to stay strong, if we're not going to give up, we have to meet together regularly to build each other up and encourage one another. All the more as the end times come. 1 Corinthians 4.26 says this, we are the church and that we function as what? One body. So it's not just about I'm going to church or I'm going to church. It's really about us together. We function as one when we come together. So when somebody's missing, even if they think they're just sitting on a pew, they're still a part of the body. They might be a cell right now, and eventually they're going to be a really important organ, but right now they're a healthy part of the body. Amen? So listen, if you're showing up and all you're doing is sitting on a pew, can I just say I'm okay with that? Because you're growing, and it's okay to grow. And at the right time, God will begin leading you in different areas, and you will mature in your faith, and then you'll get involved in different ways in people's lives, and that's part of body growth. The fact is, is a church home is essential to spiritual maturity. Our culture makes it easy to be an attendee or a consumer and not a contributor. It's easy to just check things out and move from one place to another. But I want to encourage you, like, you're a body, we're a body. Anyway, I can't do a sermon on that. Moving on. Number two, as part of that, I feel like God is really calling us as a church to really grow in the area of caring for one another. Somewhere along the line, and I won't blame people from churches before in history, but somewhere along the line, the idea came that pastoral care comes from the pastor, and it's just not biblical. Remember Ephesians, our job as pastors to equ- is to equip you for care. Like that's really your job as part of the body of Christ is to care for one another. So Galatians 6.2, as a church, we're called to what? Grieve with one another, to rejoice with one another, and to grieve with one another. And I feel that's something that we have to really work on as a church. Like how do we, as a body, as one group, how do we really make sure that we're grieving with one another so that no one grieves alone? No one should have to suffer alone. It's all of our responsibility to be with one another and encourage each other in the most deepest, darkest times of their lives. So I hope to get some resources in your hands this year to help all of us do a better job of that. Number two, uh, I feel like one of the areas that we have to grow in, um, and I think this is a struggle for all of us as believers, growing in the grace of generosity. Um, whether it be tithing or, you know, kingdom forward, like just growing in the area of like, trusting God with our finances, saying, God, you know what? Like you give me everything. You give it to me to be a blessing. And this is something that I have to grow in as well and something you have to grow in. But let me just give you some numbers real quick. Last year, um, the av- uh, last year there was $438,000 that came in for tithes and offerings. So let's just do the math for a moment which I'm thankful to God for. So let's just do the math, though. So if we do the math, uh, there's 358 adults that have checked in at least three times, right? So let's just say bare minimum, our church at a bare minimum of adults, not including kids, is not, is not less than 358. True? Okay, so if 358 adults 
call New Life Home. That's all it is, not including anybody else that didn't check in. Um, if the average income in Delta County is $29,000, some make more, some make less, get it. That means the average tithe should be how much? $3,000, right? 10% of 30000 is 3000 So that should be the average tithe, tithe a year. If you take $3,000 times 358 adults, what do you get? What, what should our base as a church be for helping us to reach our community? Do you see it? $1,074,000. That should be our base. Is it, is it about numbers? No. It's about reaching people and trusting God and growing in maturity in that area. So as a church, we try to do things like, hey, man, if you're growing, you know, take a tithe challenge. You, you know, start where you start. But church, this is not about this idea that we just need money. It's about us growing in our faith, the biblical principle of giving God our first fruits back to him. It's a very, very beginning phrase of, of, of our faith. And if you say, I don't believe in tithing, okay, fine. Generosity is even more because God owns all of it, right? So check this out. If, if, if just the 358 adults, not including anyone else that ever checked in, if they just gave, if they tithe, that they just were faithful in tithing, 1,074,000 would be our base for being able to do what? reach more people for Jesus, to invest in caring for people, to help train more people, to help do more church plants, I mean, to impact more kids for Jesus. I mean, I'm just, you know, there's a lot of things we wish we could have done that we didn't do. Let's see, like one year we gave away T-shirts to every kid at Lemmer just to encourage them. Maybe you remember that, but, you know, you need the finances to do that. One year we had, uh, we actually brought in a, a band that we paid for them to come in to just help connect the church together. We've We've tried to do um, different outreaches and, and food drives. Like, it just takes money. And so, like, it takes us being faithful to God. Amen. So, like, you don't want to stay there. So, mo- moving on. That's an area I think we have to grow in, though. One thing that's really hard for me that, that we have to grow in um, is reaching people for Jesus and Holy Spirit baptism. Um. So this is reports. It's hard to really hard to explain it, but there are 17 people that reported getting saved last year. And I'm all for that, but I feel like we should be getting at least five people every week that get saved. So maybe that's people not communicating. I get that, but I, I just feel like, God, would you help us? Like the Great Commission, that's what we're called to do is reach people. Would you help us to be reaching more people? Something that we're working on. Um, the other thing that's really heartbreaking for me is... Uh, last last year we did a four week series on Holy Spirit and Holy Spirit baptism. Where we're a church that believes the Holy Spirit is working today. We're a church that believes that every person can be baptized in the Holy Spirit and and can pray in another language. That's not essential for salvation. It's a gift that can be given. We believe that. How many people reported to be Holy Spirit baptized last year? How many do you think? Don't answer out loud. Zero. And I'm like, oh, I just did a four-week series. So could it be that someone didn't tell us? Yeah. Could it be the numbers were up? Yeah. But it still tells me that we have to do a better job as a church of emphasizing Holy Spirit baptism and the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Amen? Is this hard to hear? No. 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 We're growing, right? We're getting out. We're going to grow. We're going to grow. So, um, Part of that, I'm going to ask the three people that are helping me speak. I know I'm over time, forgive me. Uh, the three people that are going to help me speak, could you come up real quick? Um, so part of this process is after Easter, uh, we're going to start a series going through First Peter. Because First Peter really deals with a lot of stuff about, like, how do we, how do we understand who we are? And what's our identity in Christ? Um, that was brought up uh, uh, last week. What, like, who are we in Christ? First Peter talks about uh, what does God call us to be in this world? Like, what does that look like? First Peter talks about how does he expect us to live our life in this world? Um, it also talks about a biblical perspective of difficult seasons. And I know we went through some difficult seasons last year, but listen, like, we're called to grow through it. Amen? Let me just help you. Like, don't ever waste a storm in your life. Grow in every storm. 
And so we will continue to grow, continue to mature, continue to be more like Jesus. And I went way over time, you guys. I am so sorry. Um, but just give me grace, okay? So um, I, I could have all of you come up and share because you're all absolutely amazing. You all have great gifts. So I had to choose three people to share about maybe some growth area in their areas of ministry that they're leading. And so, Pastor Jacob, why don't you first lead us, if you would? All righty. So, hi. If we have not met yet, my name is Pastor Jake. Uh, and actually, specifically, uh, part of what Pastor brought me here to do was grow the church, was for the purpose of growth. Um, so just to kind of give you a little bit of insight into what I do on a weekly basis, uh, I am what kind of broad umbrella view over a lot of our first impressions, our outreach, handling a lot with the community center, handling a lot with life groups. That's a lot of what I do on a daily basis. All of that feeds into growth. And so I'm going to try and keep it condensed. I'm going to try and not turn it into a mini sermon. But again, it's probably just going to happen. It's the nature <laughs> of who I am. Um, so looking at first impressions, uh, we've. We, this is something that I... I struggle to think of a week since I've started here that we haven't had at least one new person come through the doors of our church. I mean, it's been incredible. Um, and so with that, we have an incredible team of volunteers who take care to run the coffee counter and greet people and welcome first-time guests. It's such, it's, it's such a blessing to be part of a church that does everything it can to welcome people like a family. And really what I want to do with that is we just want to keep the momentum going. We want to keep that energy going. We want to keep that focus, bringing in new people. The reason we do what we do with outreach, the reason we try and have all these events and all these things take place, the reason we're asking people to fill eggs for a bounce house bash happening in Easter is because we want to look at the community and we go, hey, God loves you. We want you to know it. This is how we're getting that message to you. There's so much more that he has in store for you. Come and see everything that he has. And so outreach is one of the many ways that we do that. And so we're going to continue to do a bunch of outreach events. We're going to reach people through all sorts of different um, things in the community. We are going to continue to just welcome people and make them feel at home. And I just want to issue a challenge because uh, this is a challenge I've lived through myself as for those of us who have been here a long, long time as we grow. As we bring in new people, as we reach the community, we're going to see a lot of unfamiliar faces. Uh, those faces are not those, those faces are nothing more than new friends. They are new connections. They are new people to grow and do life with. And so I would challenge everybody, lean into that welcome, bring people into the family. The more, the merrier, always. Um, secondly is our community center. Uh, our community center has been incredible. Pastor highlighted so many amazing things. I'm going to second that shout out to our amazing community center volunteers. You guys are incredible. And what's extra amazing, Pastor didn't highlight this, is the community center really is actually functioning as an extension of the community. It's not just new lifers that are volunteering. We have people from churches all across Escanaba and Gladstone that are coming in to say, hey, I believe in what you guys are doing here. I believe in what's happening. I want to contribute my time and my energy. So we really are believers across the community making that happen. But our goal with that, uh, through uh, fundraising efforts and um, things like we're going to be pushing you know, bricks for the community center that will be laid out outside, things like that. Um, all of those are going to be done with the goal of fundraising to hire a director for the community center. Right now, everything that comes with running it is split between myself, Pastor Jason, Cheryl, uh, and members of our board who all do amazing work, and we all make it happen, and the community center has been incredible. Uh, but the reason we want to hire a director is so that they can take what we're already doing well and bring it to another level. Um, somebody who can dedicate 100% of their time, their prayers, their energy to focusing on growing the community center and making it everything that we believe and what we believe God wants to have it become. Uh, and so that is our large goal for the community center. That's why we've been pushing it through our kingdom forward emphasis. That's why we've been asking for generosity is because we want to make things, uh, again, it's not about the numbers. It's about fulfilling what we believe God has called us to do. Uh, and then last, I promise I'm almost done. Uh, is life groups. Uh, life groups are super, super, super important. We have so many amazing life groups. Uh, it's, it's, we've hardly ever had a season in the last 10 years at New Life where we've had less than 20 different groups uh, for people to be involved with and do community in and grow together with. Uh, and really what I want to do in 2023 is I want to see that three out of every four people who regularly attend New Life are involved in at least one life group. Um, and I'll... I'll share a little bit of reason for that is that um, it is good to gather in this space. It is good to be here as a large group community uh, and learn and grow and be edified by what pastor uh, teaches and brings from the word of God each week. Um, but if you really want to grow, 
if you really want to become the person that God wants you to be, you need somebody to hold you accountable. You need somebody to challenge you. You need somebody to push you in areas of your life. You need somebody who actually comes around you and goes, hey, how are you doing? How have things been? Let me pray for you. Can you pray for me? Uh, and we believe that that happens best through our small group gatherings, through our life groups. And there's so many amazing ways that that happens. Our life group leaders are incredibly diverse uh, from all ages, uh, from all group interests, all sorts of different things. I mean, we have groups for exercise and wellness. We have groups that are going in super deep uh, Bible study. We have groups that uh, exist just to be fellowship and have fun and do life together. And so we want to make it uh, as accessible as possible. And I want to make it as accessible as possible for people to step up and facilitate groups. Uh, if you say, hey, I want to run it, but I don't know what, I want to be able to hand you a list and go, here's a million different things you can pick from. I have everything you need. You guys can just make it happen. I'll be here for you every step of the way. Uh, and so I want to make it possible for more people to facilitate groups than ever. Uh, I want to make sure people are being able to take the steps to join those groups because we grow best in community and we grow best when people are around us who love us and support us. And so I'm going to hand it off to Corrine uh, and she will take it over for you. Isn't he amazing? That's a wonderful thing that happened in 2022, but good morning, church. Um, I'm a grateful believer in Jesus. I am in recovery for alcohol, the effects of trauma, and an eating disorder. My name is Kareen. Um, that has been uh, such an important part of my life for the last 12 years that I find myself, if I'm at work, like I have to stop myself from introducing myself in that manner. Um, yeah, I haven't done that yet. But anyway, Celebrate Recovery is a 12-step Christ-centered um, ministry that has met here at New Life for about 15 years. I've been attending here about 12, and I found freedom through Jesus nine years ago. Um, so every, yeah, thank God. Um, so when, when people typically come for healing, the process starts by just walking in the door, which can, can be a very difficult thing, just walking in, admitting that we have a problem. Then we move on to step two, <clears throat> and that is that we are powerless over our compulsive behaviors, our addictions, whatever it is that's going on, we are completely powerless over about it. Step three, we turn our lives over to God. We just try to find hope through Jesus through step three. And I'm really excited about what I've seen God doing in people's lives in 2022, especially. I would have to say the biggest way that we grew is that, two for instances, um, one, a woman who came because she was grieving um, her son had died, and another, a young girl who was a, a math addict, and then she developed a brain disorder, um, that's just two people that stand out in my mind, and they, they not only came to find healing for what brought them in the door, they just went deeper into Jesus, and I'm watching God move inside of them and just seeing what the plan is going to be for their lives is just amazing to me. And so what we're looking at in 2022 is implementing some of our further steps down the line. Um, step 11 we sought through prayer and meditation to improve our conscious contact with God, praying only for knowledge of his will for us and the power to carry that out. Step 12, having had a spiritual experience as the result of these steps, we try to carry this message to others and to practice these principles in all our affairs. I, I did not think on a Thursday night with um, sometimes people coming in off the street that we could really share openly about the Holy Spirit. I thought we would scare them off, but people love it. They love it. And so that has really been helpful for us. Um, and it, just one of my favorite verses, in fact, my very favorite one, um, is Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans <clears throat> I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope in a future. And he has proven that to be true, definitely in my life and in so many other people's lives that I just, I, I just want that for everyone, for everyone to discover their gift, who they are in Christ, and then to move forward and do that. Um, it's been the greatest joy of my life, even, well, birthing my kids maybe number one, but this was definitely number two, just walking in the door of New Life Church and having him just change my life forever. Um, so there's a couple other areas that we would like to grow in 2023. Um, God laid it on my heart 
<clears throat> about two weeks ago, and we've been praying for at least five years to be able to minister to children and teens um, through some Celebrate Recovery programs that we have. So in September, we are going to launch what's called Celebration Place, and that is for ages kindergarten through fifth grade. Um, they call it a pre-recovery just trying to help these kids before they get to be teens, before they get to be adults. Um, and then, so that we're gonna start that in September of 2023, and then we're hoping for September of 2024 um, to move into a teen ministry called The Landing. So if you guys can be praying for us, you know, we're gonna need a lot of people to step up, but because this was God's idea and not Kareen's idea, I know that all the doors are going to be open just when they need to be, and that's already starting to happen. So we're really excited about that. And then lastly, um, one of the other things that I do is I help other Celebrate Recoveries get running and launch. And during COVID, of course, there was a lot of trouble within Celebrate Recoveries. A couple of them folded. Um, so I do spend a good amount of time doing that. We have six now in the Upper Peninsula, which is fantastic. Um, 35,000 around the world, actually, and um, but what my hope is, is to bring a couple more in Delta County. Um, people need recovery sometimes more than just one night a week, so we're hoping to get some other churches um, stepping up and involved and do it several nights a week. So thank you so much for letting me share. Hello, church. It's good to be with you today. I'm Pastor Wayland. I'm the youth pastor here at New Life Church, and it's such an honor to be able to be with you guys here in this community and to be able to do ministry with you. I want to share a couple things with you in regards to youth as we kind of wrap up. I'll try to be quick here. Um, last year, we had an amazing uh, year with our youth. Was always some of the big highlights of our year is the youth trips that we go on, summer camp, youth convention, winter camp. In fact, this last winter camp, which is 2023, but I still want to celebrate it. Um, this last winter camp that we went on here in February was the uh, largest one we had brought kids on. We had over 20 kids go on this uh, youth convention, yeah, <laughs> or camp. Uh, and um, not only did we bring a lot of kids, numbers is cool, but um, I got to actively watch God's presence deeply impact their lives at the altar, and that's the part that really uh, gets me like emotional and moving and seeing uh, God moving in these kids' lives and uh, kids that were there that were talked about how uh, they finally understood like God's presence, or there was one that felt finally the call to ministry and stuff like that, stuff that happens like that that's just super like, ah, it gets me so hyped and excited about youth ministry. Uh, moving forward here in the next couple, in this year, uh, there's some things that uh, we're very excited about. Uh, one of the big things is Speed the Light. I've just really felt like on my heart that our youth group really needs to step it up, um, raising funds for Speed the Light. If you don't know what Speed the Light is, it's a missions organization that uh, teenagers across the country raise funds for. Speed the Light uh, is a What's the word? Organization that raises or provides the physical uh, instruments and tools for missionaries to be able to go to the place they need to go. It could be a Jeep to get over uh, like mountains. It could be a, a moped to get through the city. It could be paper products, stuff like that. Physical things missionaries need in order to speed the light. Um, speed the light buys them for it. And so Students across the country raise money for it. And our students this year have set a very high goal, way more than any uh, goal we've set so far. And we're, our goal this year is to raise $4,300 for Speed the Light. And the fun thing, the cool thing is right now, we are over the amount that we've raised previously from last year. So that's very exciting. I'm very excited about that. Yeah, go ahead. Give it up. Um, and you'll notice, too, we have a bake sale going on outside uh, for Speed Light stuff that I'm very excited. The fun thing about the bake sale is that I didn't have to do anything with it. They just did it. <laughs> and I'm just like, yes. <laughs> so they, they went for it, and they're, they're doing it, and I'm so excited about that. Um, and I'm very excited for um, all the cool things. I have a whole, like, rewards track. They think it's rewards. It's really punishments for me um, as they raise money and stuff. So if you see me walking around in a clown suit someday, you'll know what's up. Um, so, but, so Speed the Light is a thing that I'm very excited about and I'm very uh, pushing our students to go out for that. And another thing, and I didn't say this at first service, but I forgot, I forgot, totally forgot to say about it. Uh, but one of the things that, like, um, I've just felt uh, as I've been praying and as I've been moving forward and doing ministry, okay, how can we improve uh, where are our students at? It's just that uh, church is fun. Like, I want, I want the students to understand that. I want new kids from the community to know that, like, it's, 
Church is fun. We can have fun here at church. We can laugh and we can play games. And it's not like everyone's just stuffy and just like, ah, at church. Because a lot of community kids have that understanding. And it's just like, no, it's fun. We can connect. We can relax. We can have a good time here at church. And that's one of the things that I've been uh, really uh, digesting. And like, you know what? I really want to make, I want to make it fun because church can be fun. So Mission Speed of Light, that's a thing we're excited about. Making it fun and getting our kids more involved in the ownership of their own faith and serving. I, I t- totally forgot to share nothing. I'm all, like all over the place right now. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> I wanted to share with you the mission statement because NL Youth has a mission statement. And I wanted to share that with you. Our mission statement at NL Youth is NL Youth strives to create loving, spirit-filled disciples through worship, word, and works. And so through that, we are trying to create loving, uh, spirit-filled disciples. And so we're very excited for this next year. And I want to say thank you to you guys for your faithfulness and your generosity and being able to enable me to be able to minister to the students in the Delta County. So thank you so much.